the symbols of the multiverse. So for those not aware, this is a card game of sorts. And the reason why we're here right now is I figured I'd go ahead and show my hand a little bit. No card joke intended, but... There are a lot of people upset over the whole Dynamic Q fiasco in League of Legends, and as such, they've started to jump ship to Overwatch. And the thing is, me being a cheapskate, I'm not really a FPS fan either. It's not really a jump I'm going to make. So in the event I were to make a jump to another game that would fill in the uh, void League would have, it would be this one. So if you're not aware, let's go to New Game. And the way this works is you put together a team of heroes to fight a particular villain. Now, unfortunately, I do only have the base version, but since the Steam Summer Sale is on the horizon, I think I'm going to pick up the Season 1 Pass, which will unlock all of these villains. Now, the big thing that I liked about League of Legends was that there were so many different combinations of characters that could take the field that no game really felt the same as a previous one. And this game is pretty similar. So in order for this to set up, we have to choose a villain. I'm not going to turn on advance because that's a whole ton of trouble. If you want to know what these are, you can click on them. This is Baron Blade. He's a scientist type of villain, as you can tell just by looking at him. He has 40 hit points. And the thing is, each villain has something different about them. Baron Blade, the key thing is you have 15 discards before he automatically wins. So you have to take away his 40 hit points, and in doing so, he will flip. Now he'll get 30 more hit points, and his abilities change. So you'll actually understand what all this means, but I'll tell you that the H's that you'll see on the various cards refer to the number of heroes in play. So that's Baron Blade, you have Sizen Dawn, who is probably the most annoying one out of the whole bunch, in my opinion, for the starting decks. She's the one given difficulty 3, compared to Baron Blade, who's only 1. Boss is from difficulty 3. Uh, and then you also have Omnitron, so you can see there's no uh, difficulty 2 villain in here. But as you get the other villains, then it will change. And I should also point out, if you activate the advance, these guys get a lot stronger. So, 15 discards, he wins. If you look here, number of heroes minus 2 cards automatically get discarded at the beginning of his turn. So you have a very small window to take him down. So these are your villains. Now, to fight the villains, you have heroes. So you can make a team from 3 to 5 heroes here. And just as with the villains, there are a lot of these guys available in the expansions. And depending on what type of combinations you're willing to take, you can really get a large number going. And to make things even more complicated, you do have variants. So this is... we'll use Legacy as an example here since I will be using him. This is Normal Legacy. Now, you can get America's Greatest Legacy with one of the expansions, I think. There's a way to unlock it that's tied into an achievement. By doing something special, which is actually getting KO'd by Baron Blade, you can unlock a new legacy, which is somewhat different. She's more offensive-oriented. Oops, I don't actually want to use her. But these are three different versions, all of this one card. And I'm going to use the Freedom 4, I think it is. Let's see, Tachyon and Raytheia, in order to fight Baron Blade. So you do get to choose the order of the cards as you pull them down. And what's worth mentioning is that the order actually is pretty damn important. So Bunker and Wraith, if you want to know in hero terms how these guys are, Legacy is like a combination of Superman and Captain America. Bunker is like Iron Man, Wraith is like Batman, and Tachyon is obviously like Flash or Quicksilver. And then you also have Absolute Zero, who's probably the most complex of the bunch. He's like Mr. Freeze, except heroic. Fanatic, I hate her, so I don't really know too much about her, but she's just this angelic type. Haka is a heavy hitter type melee user. Ra is a fire elemental. Tempest is a water using alien. He's not quite like an Aquaman, but he's a pretty solid card in this game. 
And then Visionary is one of the more complex characters to use, and she's all about manipulating decks. You think she's supposed to be like Xavier or Jean Grey from Marvel Comics, but she really is her own beast of sorts. Now, to further complicate things, you also have different environments that you can find in. Now, since we are playing the base version, there are only these four levels to choose from. Insula Primalis, which is... Uh, what's that? The Savage Lands, I think they're called in the X-Men, which is... Uh, I can't remember what it's called exactly, but this is like an X-Men environment. You have dinosaurs that will attack you, volcanoes, stuff like that to worry about. Megalopolis is basically your metropolis, or just generic city setting. This place is incredibly annoying because of the friggin' paparazzi and the media. If they could just mind their own damn business, this place would be tolerable. Atlantis is kind of interesting. This is Tempest's place. It has all sorts of automated defenses and sea life to complicate things. And then you have the Mars base, which is probably what Baron Blade is strongest in. There is a lot of automated stuff going on here. Drones and stuff will attack you, all that sorts of stuff. I want to go to Atlantis just because I think it has the most variety of things that can happen, but tons of places you can unlock, and there are all sorts of combinations you can do which really do draw out the life of this game. And now, what I'm doing here is actually a single player game, but you can do multiplayer where each person will control a different hero. The villains play themselves, so you don't have to worry. And depending on how many people you get, you can have a team of 3 to 5 going, which may or may not be a good thing, because some of the villains actually are pretty strong against groups of 5, while some are pretty weak to groups of 3. So time to show you guys the gameplay, since I've been rattling on way too long. At last, the destruction of my greatest foe is at hand. A legacy shall fall. Stand down, Baron. The price of your hatred should not be the entire planet. Onward. So right here you can look at the hands of the various characters, what all they have. I'll explain things as we go. But one thing to know is that there is a damage bonus in play for Nemeses. So Baron Blade and Legacy or Nemeses, as such, they will do bonus damage to each other. Each hero has their own Nemesis, but not all of them are available in the starter kit. So his ability pulls this mobile defense platform out. Basically, when this is on the field, you cannot attack him directly. You have to kill this first. And then each time he's dealt damage, this card is going to shock his attacker. Now, I don't actually know if I have anyone here who can destroy that reliably. So next evolution. That's not going to help me. That's not going to help me. We're going to pop... Bolster Allies, which is going to cause everyone to draw a card. Now this is actually pretty nice, once you have some powers in play, it allows you to use it to a turn. Adhesive Foam Grenade for Bunker, that can come in handy for slowing down the environment, because that will attack you. Really nice card for Wraith. Ooh, and Tachyon Signature card. So the, you can only play one card a turn, unless you have some other effect in play to change that. So once your cards have been played, you can use a power. Legacy will buff all your allies' damage if you use Galvanize. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then your turn ends when you draw a card. Next up is Bunker. And unfortunately I don't have anything here that can do damage. <laughs> I actually want to use Ammo Drop. For Bunker, you want to draw lots of cards. His power even ties into that because he has to set up. You have to put equipment on him so that he can shoot and stuff. So we're going to use Initialize. And we got Recharge Mode, damn it. That's two of them. Because I got one more for ending my turn. So worth mentioning is Bunker has modes that change how you behave. So you have Recharge Mode, which is... Well, one of your modes allows you to play two cards. One mode will cause you to draw two, and the third mode will allow you to use two powers per turn. So Wraith, we have Impromptu Invention, draw a card, search your deck for an equipment card and put it into play. We are going to go ahead and pop this. Give us Mega Computer, which is pretty nice. That lowers the damage of um, the environment. 
and it's like that for everything in play, villains included. So first things first, I think I want the... Yeah, we're going to take the Razor Ordinance. We're going to put this in play so she has an attack. And now, because of this works, I get to play another card. And I'm going to play another Impromptu Invention. Give me the Grappling Hook. We are going to pop the Micro Computer. This increases the damage of her projectiles by 2. We're going to put that there. And then we can play one more card. So the Grappling Hook allows me to destroy an ongoing or environment card, and it's going to allow me to draw. So we're going to play this and destroy the Backlash Field. That gives a card to Bunker, and also one to Wraith. And another impromptu invention. Unfortunately, I can't use it this turn. So we're going to pop Razor Ordinance, and now since we can't attack the Baron, we're going to attack his platform. We're getting plus two from the computer, plus one from Legacy. So we're going to drop this thing for to four health this turn. And we got another targeting computer. Okay, unfortunately Tachyon is not one of the ones I know a lot about, but we have Blinding Speed. You get to destroy an environment or ongoing car. That can come in handy. I didn't know she had that. Each player may draw a card. You may play a card. So let's go ahead and pop this. Okay, Fortitude for Legacy, which is pretty nice because it makes him tankier. External Combustion for Bunker, pretty handy. Mega Computer for Wraith, and then Tachyon Pulse Sucker Punch. Now we're going to push the limits. And you get to play an additional... So this is good when you have a lot of cards in your garbage. I don't. And I actually don't have anything else to play here unless I want to use a speed card, which I really don't. So we're going to pop her ability, Rapid Recon. So we could choose to destroy this. And if you want to know why you want to discard it, there are two reasons why you would want to do this. The first of which is by destroying this, it goes in your discard pile, and then a card like Sonic Vortex, like if this were a burst card, will do more damage. And then in the event you don't actually want this, you can clear it out so you can actually get something you do want. But I want those goggles, damn it. So I'll take those, and then Pushing the Limits gives me another card. We get Lightspeed Barrage. This is another one that scales off of the cards in her trash. So next up is the Environment. Mystical Defenses. The deals two target or two damage to everything on the field. Now the order here matters because if we could destroy this, then Baron Blade would take damage. But since it's not going to be destroyed, the order here does not actually matter. So nullified two damage, two damage, two, two, two. Now Baron Blade goes. Power Remote Turret. Car deals each hero two damage at the end of turn. Increases damage dealt by one if the mobile defense platform is in play, which it is. So, there's a. Depending on what cards are in play, the order here could matter, it's just I don't have those in play. So, everyone's gonna take three damage. So his power has timed out. And I think I want Fortitude out so I'm tankier. That way I can withstand a lot of stuff. We're going to Galvanize and end the turn. Superhuman Durability, so that will make him even tankier if I were to play it. As for our buddy Bunker here, we're going to put in Heavy Plating. It does the same thing as Fortitude. It reduces damage he takes by one. And we're going to draw Current mode, so you get to use two powers per turn if you have that out there. Gatling Gun, this is the equipment, but the thing is you have to sacrifice cards to keep using it. In the event you could actually um, guarantee destroying something with it, that would be one thing, but we can't. Breath deals two targets, can't deal damage. So we're going to pop the... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, this'll work. 
There we go, we got the utility belt. So here I want the throwing knives, because this allows me to attack three different targets. We're going to put that in play. And then we are going to put the utility belt into play. I was going to do the mega computer here so that I could actually um, reduce the damage by this. That would it would make a bunker and legacy completely immune. But right here we're going to pop the throwing knives first. And we're going to start on the mobile defense platform. So this gets the plus two from her computer, plus one from Legacy, and down it goes. Baron Blade can now be damaged. And with that out of the way, this does less damage. We also got the card for Bunker, that's his third mode. In case you want to unlock his alternate, or his variant, all you have to do is play all three modes in one game. So next up, we're going to hit this. finish off by attacking Baron Blade. Now, because of the utility belt, she gets to use two powers. We're going to use the Razor Ordnance, and we're going to... Yeah, I think I want to play it safe and just kill the turret. Now, the bad part about doing this is that it does send a card to his graveyard trash, whatever you want to call it, but it gave me the card I was looking for with Bunker. Which is why I wanted to do that. So we got the infrared eyepiece for, uh... Yes, you have to set pay health to keep using this. Unfortunately, Galvanize does amplify the damage you take, so you can't keep pushing the limits in play for too long. And you know what? Let's pop this to destroy this. And I don't think I can do anything else here, so we're going to skip. Hypersonic Assault. The advantage here is that this is really good for characters, or villains that will have lots of minions on the field. The one exception I'd say is Citizen Dawn, because she has minions who can nullify damage to other minions, and it just gets messy. Still, I would like to have that in my hand. We also got Accelerated Assault. Environment is going to pull Toxic Seaweed. So I can destroy this by sacrificing my hand on a hero. If you want to look at your hands, you can pull it up here and look. She's actually the one I'm most likely to make the sacrifice with, because I... I would love to get the Mega Computer out, but I can try to get it some other way. So we're going to sacrifice Wraith's hand to take that out. He got another defense platform. Sublime. the legacy ring in case I get something that can start damaging Baron Blade. We're going to pop Galvanize. Now, legacy can do a number on people, it's just I haven't been able to get the right cards to do so. The main thing you want for him is Inspiring Presence, because that will add one damage onto everything else that he does, which can be really, really annoying. So, right here... Equip the grenade launcher, and now I can actually shoot. The one thing that does suck, though, is this is good for thinning out herds, and I can only damage one target. That's pretty much it. You can see Baron Blade won't take any damage, we'll shoot him anyway. Zero. And then you can shoot heroes. In case you're wondering, the heroes also do have flipped forms. If you need a flip form, you can shoot your ally, but I don't recommend it. So right here is Omni Cannon. You can basically sacrifice your hand to almost one-shot a guy if you have enough cards. Unfortunately, I don't. So we're going to use Razor Ordnance here. We're using this first because I can destroy the mobile pl defense platform with Brave. Now we're going to use our Throwing Knives. This will destroy it, also giving Bunker a card. 
There we go. That's the other card. This is the one that's good for single target. And then we're going to attack Baron Blade. And then we're going to stop. Combat stance. This is basically a counterattack type thing, which is pretty good. I'm going to keep it going a little bit longer. In case you're wondering, Tachyon flipped. You can either give a player a card, or they can play a card, you can have them draw, or you can have them take something from their trash and put it in their hand. Now, unfortunately, I don't really have anything to hurt him, so we'll just toss this. Two damage, that's pretty much all I can afford right now. Okay, so I want to keep this one because it's gonna allow me to discard more cards. In case you're wondering how you get Super Scientific Tachyon, which is her variant, you just have to discard five cards in one turn, which is actually kind of easy to do. Ooh, hallway collapse. So when this enters play, everyone takes damage. Doesn't matter the order this time, but sometimes it does. So minus one for fortitude. If I had the mega computer, that would be an additional minus one. But the problem is Baron Blade would also take less. In case you're wondering, there's no penalty for running out of cards. You merely just shuffle your trash. Uh -oh. So we all take damage here. Order doesn't matter. There was the nemesis bonus there, which you didn't get to see because I skipped over it too fast. And he got his next mobile defense platform. So we're going to pop this and hit the mobile defense platform. The reason why I'm playing this right now is because I want to draw a card. I'm fishing for inspiring presence. I hate lead from the front. So we're going to galvanize, rogue interception. If I could have gotten, um, crud, I was saying its name a second ago, heroic inspiration out, then I could really take these down fast because I'd amplify everyone's damage. But in the meantime, we are going to pull out the flat cannon. Plus four. Another external combustion. We're gonna pop this. She should counterattack now. And the throwing knife should be enough to take down the defense platform so I can use the razor ordinance on Blade himself. Another ammo drop, which gave me an ammo drop. Let's hit him. And we're gonna stop. Oh, in case you're wondering what Wraith's ability is, it basically reduces the damage she takes by two. Stunbolt, that can come in handy if he doesn't play anything stupid. This will be the last turn I do this, because I can't really afford to spare any more health. So we're going to pop quick inside. Fleet of foot. Synaptic Interruption. That is a really nice card. Supersonic Response. And now I have to throw away two cards. I'm gonna do pushing the limit. And we're sucker punch. So two melee damage, and since he attacked me, I should be able to hit him back. And it looks like it's not actually applying here, even though he used his one spell thing. There we go, supersonic response. Let's do Fleet of Foot, that way everyone gets a draw, next evolution, that doesn't help. And he's a foam grenade, can come in handy, that can come in handy. I don't remember how many cards I can play this turn, that's the thing. Um, this does... Tekion deals 3 sonic damage. Okay, this one is 3 damage to multiple guys. 
This one is damage based off the number of burst cards in our trash. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's pop light speed barrage. Now I could have held on to that for when he flips, but oh well. Yes, get rid of that sucker. Perfect. Perfect. So that should have been enough cards right there to unlock our variant, but I already have it unlocked. Pillars of Hercules. Players may play an additional card, use additional power, draw an additional card. I didn't get to read all of that. Slash and burn. So right there you can see the nemesis bonus. Another power turret. Right there's the counterattack. So I guess if I had Wraith go first and she could kill it before it acts, that would be one thing. Oh man. So elemental damage to him is sent back at us. So you do need to take this down fast because it's going to fill up his trash, and I don't really think there's anything here I need to play, so... Yeah, we're going to sacrifice the turn. Unfortunately, this does mean I don't get the Galvanize bonus, so keep that in mind. I would like to play the maintenance unit so I can start healing him, but I want to keep the environment out of play, so we're going to pop the foam grenades. Now this is projectile damage, so I don't have to worry about the redistribution. So two. Two. And one, because the last shot's the weakest. Another turret mode. I'm gonna hold on to that. We'll put the stun bolt into play. So right here we're going to use the throwing knives. This is going to cause him to flip, just so you know. Another Omni Cannon. And boom. So here we go into the second phase of the fight. We no longer have to worry about the 15 discards ending the fight. actually going to use this one to reduce his damage. Mainly I am worried about Tachyon dropping here. I would like to keep her going for another turn if possible. So if I were to deal the damage, she'd die. I have to discard that. You get to play an additional card. So right here, if you read this, if you were to take three or more damage from a single source, you get to send that at a target of your choice. That can be environment, villain, what have you. So in the event I were up against someone who uh, used an elemental attack on him, I could actually... This will redirect it. If it were to redirect it at her, I could redirect it myself, and hopefully you can see how messy this can get. So we're going to pop light speed barrage just in case she does not survive. We're going to throw everything at Baron Blade. And now do we want this card? No, I would like to have that. Okay, now it's the environment's turn, but since the adhesive foam grenade was used, it can't do anything. Its turn is over. Baron Blade's up. So that punishes us for having ongoing stuff in play. Each hero takes lightning damage, where three plus the number of hero ongoing equipment cards are in play. So if you were willing to tank, you could... actually uh, withstand this, but I'm going to sacrifice all of Legacy's cards on the field. For Bunker... 
let's just get rid of all of this. There are ways to get cards out of his trash, so don't worry. Now for her, I have to get rid of everything, which... It's going to severely limit her usefulness, I'm afraid. Actually, for her... Should play everybody destroy any of their cards? Each target takes... Three plus the number of cards. I'm actually going to keep her stuff going. So we're going to have Tachyon go first. We are going to redirect this at Baron Blade. And she got hit anyway because of the redistribution. And for these three, it doesn't matter. Now, he attacked Bunker, because that's his new ability. Take down. Villain cards cannot be played. We're going to use Backfist Strike. And I want the Nemesis bonus. And we're going to Galvanize. We got Fortitude. Now, I can't use the Combustion because that will get redirected. How's the Gatling Gun work again? Start of your turn, damn. If I were to use Omni Cannon here, at the start of your turn... You know what, let's end it. So right here we're going to draw... I didn't get any of the cards that will allow me to pull stuff out of my trash. We're going to use Throat Jab, and we're going to use it on him to prevent him from healing damage. So right here, we're going to reduce damage by Stealthy. Take a card from Trash into their hand. I want Wraith to grab... this. Font of Power. At the end of the environment turn, play the top card of the villain deck. Blade Battalion. Perception. So we have to discard two of these cards. This, the inventory barrage isn't going to do anything because I don't have any ongoings out. Then we're going to throw away the smoke bombs. deck. Okay, that's going to expire. So right there is the backlash field where it's going to shoot back. Throw jab stopped him, but unfortunately the blade battalion and the heroic interceptions in play.
Gatling guns going into play. Throw jab stops that. Yeah, I'd rather shut up the environment just in case I can't end him here. significance of these is we have to throw away all three. One hit point left. We're going to sacrifice an auxiliary power source. Hmm. It really doesn't matter because it's going to end here, so we're going to do stun bolt. By using different heroes, by having more people in here, the game can get very complex. And what makes it worse is, as you can tell by my guys' hit points, not every fight is a guaranteed win. Sometimes, based on combinations, draws, stuff like that, you can be doomed before the game begins. And this game is getting even more expansions as we speak, so the number of heroes will be going up. So if we were to look here, I'm trying to think of anyone I recognize to compare them to. Captain Cosmic kind of makes me think of like a Green Lantern, stuff like that. Otherwise he's not listed here, but Guys is kind of like Deadpool from Marvel Comics, and there are even more. The one I was looking here for though is the Arch and Adept, who is probably the single most complicated card next to Guys. So that is Heroes of the or Sentinels of the Multiverse, something that may be making an appearance here in the event. I actually put together a group or League of Legends really does fall through. But there's still I'm gonna let League play out a little bit more, I'm gonna try ranked and everything, and depending on how that goes, you may be seeing more of this in the future. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed. I'm the hero oh right, one other thing before we wrap this up. Um, there actually are weekly one-shots. These are basically challenges that the devs put out, so if you were to do this one, you have to fight Ambuscade with Unity, Wraith, Haka. Now, unfortunately, I don't have either of these guys because they're in expansion packs, but you have a week to do these, and by doing them, you get... Here we go. You can get special bonuses. If you beat it on the first try without undoing anything, you get a mint copy. If you beat it on the first or second try, you get near mint. If you just win it within the week time period, you get a fine, and just by beating it in general, you get a good. I don't know if you can do these in multiplayer, but that is something worth looking into. It's just you can't play multiplayer unless you have the expansions that the people playing multiplayer have also. So if I were to try it, I have to play with people with the base version, and until I get the Season 1 pass, I can't really play with anyone who has Season 1. But anyway, that's where we stand right now. The Hero of Light. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.